about the dispersive uh, or turn electrodes. So go ahead and look at your uh, station and pick up that and go and open it up. And if you look on the outside of it, it says REM. Okay. My first question for you is like, what percent of the pad really needs to be in place for it to work properly? So let's go ahead and test that. Let's see what percent of the pad. So I'll do it and then you guys can try it. So here's the pad, and I'm going to put it on my arm. All right. So once I once I put it in fully, you should see the return electrode monitor turn green. See over here on the far side? It should turn green. And as I pull it off longitudinally, it should eventually give me an error. So let's see what percent of the pad needs to be on before it gives me an error. Still green. OK, so that's the percent by 50%. All right, so give that a try. So I'll pull it off this way. See, at what point is that uh, error? L a little less. See that? A little bit less. All right. So what's that all about? Why is it that it's less one way and a lot more the other way? Surface area. So is it uh, possible? So why is it that if I just touch the two together, watch, I get a green without any surface area on, my, on skin? Right, so most people don't recognize that the pad has two sub pads, right, with something in between. There's an electrode, there's an electrode, and they both serve as your dispersive electrode when you apply electrosurgery. But it has its own interrogatory circuit between the two, and it's measuring the resistance between the one pad to the other pad. So if you have skin in between, that's the perfect amount of resistance. Right? It's not too much the way it is now, and it's not too little the way it would be like this. See, I still get an error if there's too little resistance. So at one point, you'll get just the right resistance, just the right amount, the same as it would be for skin, to the point where it turns green. So pure is that low voltage, continuous waveform that we talked about earlier. Blend is the blend of 50%. So 50% of the time it's on, the duty cycle is on, 50% of the time it's off. And so that's the voltage of cut? On, on, the, on the setting of cut, that's right. So if, in my, in, if I were to make the 70, 50% 70 uh, of the time it'd be on 70, 50% of the time it'd be off. All right. On the other side, you see fulgurate, um, which is the coag setting of 6% on. In the spray, it's only 4% on. Okay. The other things that change when you go to blend and spray is that power impedance curves. Remember we talked about that before? So if, if the impedance is down here and the power is here, when you go from a cut, I'm sorry, from a pure to a blend, you get a shift in the power impedance curve. So in other words, it stays on longer, creating more of a tissue effect. That's also true when you go from fulgurate to spray. It shifts the power impedance curve to the right, so it stays on longer. So it wants to spark across more dramatically. Now let's demonstrate the different tissue effects. So let's go with vaporization, fulguration, and desiccation. So to do that, we're going to activate, pull it through the orange, and vaporize. This is all with cotton, right? Yes. Yes. No, but it's with this. So you should see areas where it's completely clean. And that's a typical vaporization. Then demonstrate fulguration by activating. Pull it through the same way. See how you get the spray? So now I want to demonstrate the different desiccation techniques. So take, again, take your pencil. We're, we should have similar settings, 90 and 90. I want you to hold it on the orange in a different area. And I want you to hold it with a large surface area, like this. OK? And then we'll activate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11, 12. Okay, so that was with using the cut, and now I'm going to do the same thing with the spray. 12 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? So while they both are desiccating, right, they're both desiccating, there's a difference. If you take a scalpel, if you take a scalpel and you cut it, okay, if you cut it lengthwise, you should see a difference in the depth. Exactly. Right, so here's desiccate using cut waveform. Here's, de here's desiccate using the coag waveform. See the difference? So why is it that, why is it that when we grab a bleeder with a hemostat and we use the coag waveform, we hear all of this great audio, right? It's like crackling and popping and sounds really exciting. Whereas when you hit the cut waveform, it's like this, it's not working. Like, turn it up. What's wrong with this thing? Well, it's because of this, because you have high voltage with coag, so you get this very high tissue effect rapidly, superficially. Whereas the coag, I'm sorry, the cut waveform, very low voltage, it's going to penetrate deep without all of that kind of superficial effect early on. So that's the difference. That's why you want to use cut to desiccate. And here you've demonstrated it, the difference between the two. Um, so this is a 25 watt uh, fluorescent bulb, right? So it's got a filament inside of it. And so the wire goes from the end here through the filament and then out through the sides here, right? So if I want to light the bulb up, I should be able to go from the bovi to one terminal, through the filament, back through my fingers, and then back to the dispersive electrode, right? So that's the circuit. As long as you can explain the circuit, you should be fine. So I've got it set at 30, 30 actually I'll go to 25, because this is a 25 watt bulb. All right, now how do I hold the bulb? Do I hold it like this? So I'm gonna hold it with large surface area, and I'm gonna put the bovi right at the very end of it. And what should I see? Okay, so if you wanna be really brave, you put high chun in the circuit, we have to, so now where's the circuit, right? Let me make some contact. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're holding on for dear life. <laughs> so it's going to go through here, through the filament, through Hai Chun, through our hands, and then back to the dispersive electrode. All right. And, all right, ready? And you could actually use a chain of people. I turn it up, obviously, but... A more dramatic way to demonstrate um, straight current with an open activation is to use a, uh, a light bulb, all right? an incandescent light bulb. So incandescent light bulbs have like this um, phosphorus coating on the inside of it. And when uh, the mercury uh, gas inside of it is activated, then it interacts with that phosphorus to make it turn white. So if I wrap this around, we can activate that mercury inside and go with cut. You don't really see much. That high voltage coag setting, much more dramatic effect. And then unwrap by one, okay? You still see an effect. Unwrap by one, you still get an effect. Do a closed activation, nothing. So open activation promotes that stray those stray circuits. Again, you can do sort of a, simil a similar thing by talking about jewelry. So you can also demonstrate a similar thing. Again, if, if, I'm, if I'm getting stray current, if I wrap the wire around my arm and get some stray current going through me in an open activation, I can use jewelry to demonstrate a tissue effect. So here's my wedding ring. So if I, if I use coag, 60 watts, and stray current, so open activation, I can see a tissue effect.